Hey, what's going on guys? Lethal Flux here. And um, again, sorry for not uploading a video for a week. Uh, been a little busy with work, like always. But um, I know right off the bat you guys are thinking, man, Lethal, what is this? There's a thousand eyes restrict. There's an Air Knight Parshath. And uh, what, what is what is Goat Control? What is that? Well, basically, Goat Control was the top deck of the 2005 format. Um, you're going to be noticing a lot of banned cards, including Thousand Eyes Restrict, Premature Burial, Pot of Greed, all that good stuff, and uh, lots of more. And um, basically, uh, me and my team decided to build, um, or a lot of people actually, we just have Goat Control decks is what the the deck was called, but, and you'll see why in, a, in a, a few minutes. But um, we decided to have, you know, take a break from the, the competitive scene of Yu-Gi-Oh! and just go, go back and reminisce into the... Uh, year of 2005 um I, I didn't play during this format but man is it fun um i remember when these cards were legal and there was no ban list and uh playing with these is just is, is so great and going back and actually th having to think about your plays and there's some things that are combo based but a, a lot of the things just are, are just amazing and uh, it's a really really fun deck to play with just you and your buddy or something if you decide to want to build go control now by uh viewing this video so um yeah, it's it's awesome and it's really fun just to get away from the competitive scene once again. So uh, without any further ado, let's go into the deck profile. I will be s explaining some cards because um, I don't I don't know if a lot of you know what the cards do or why they were ran in the uh, goat control format, but um, you will be hearing nonetheless. So uh, let's get into the main deck now. This right here is a uh, Air Knight Parshath. So Air Knight Parshath was used when uh, your opponent had scapegoat tokens or when your opponent would set anything uh, 1900 back in the day was a really big deal so um, the thing was with this is it can pierce uh, it did piercing damage and whenever this inflicted damage to your opponent you drew one card and uh, guys advantage was huge back in 2005 it was so hard to gain advantage um, even though there was cards like uh, heavy storm that were still legal and was legal all the way up until now but uh, gaining card advantage and drawing cards was huge off of uh, let me zoom in real quick There we go oh, a little too far alrighty um, This the fact that this did piercing damage and um, it was 1900 was just um, a really big deal um, it, it was one tribute which wasn't a lot. It was amazing um, For back in the day nowadays a, a card like that uh, wouldn't be ultra rare. It would just I don't know but uh Air Knight Parshath was an, an amazing card for the GOAT format. A lot of people run one, I decided to run two, um, but it's all up to you guys. And a card that just recently made a return on the ban list is Magician of Faith. Um, two of these because uh, you, ran Tsuki, you run Tsukiyomi in the deck, um, really easy to abuse um, all of your, uh, your really overpowered um, spell cards in the deck uh, which is also why a lot of people main deck a nobleman across that which i main deck as well in the goat um, control format um it's a really fun deck to play so yeah magician of faith flip get a spell easy easy stuff guys easy stuff next uh, what i was just talking about is tsukiyomi um this card was really really good back in the day um if you had a magician of faith set you flipped it you added you summon Tsukiyomi, you flip this back down uh, during the end phase, it'll return to your hand, and um, yeah, it was just a great card to to have with um, comboing Magician of Faith off of. It was just amazing. And now for the uh, one ofs, I believe, uh, some really powerhouse monsters. BLS back in the day was huge, it's huge now, and it still is, and uh, a lot of people thought this would never come off the ban list. I was hoping it would, uh, it did. <laughs> but. BLS it was just an amazing card and it still is today so getting this out back in the day was was awesome but sometimes it would be um, bad because they'd have the ring of destruction to either tie the game or beat you with your BLS and you'd have to have the book of moon or something to to respond you also got one Sangan uh, a lot of the times you're going to be going for things like Sinister Serpent, DD Warrior Lady um, also a lot of other stuff GD Warrior Lady, Break the Magical Warrior. Um, MST was at 1 in this format, I believe. So Break the Magical Warrior was awesome. It had that 1900 attack, and you could remove the counter to pop a uh, spell or trap. So it forced the opponent to chain um, whatever you targeted, or it would just destroy it if it was something like a bottomless or a mirror force. And, and that was big, because MST was at 1. 
Uh, Azura Priest, this was really good back in the day because GOAT control, guys. Uh, this can attack all monsters your opponent controls, I believe once each. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, once each. So it would attack all the GOAT tokens, and they wouldn't have anything to metamorphosis um, for Thousand Eyes Restrict, which is really what the, the deck likes to do, is to go into Thousand Eyes Restrict. Spirit Reaper, really hard to get over. Um, although, if your opponent had an Avenging Knight Parshath, um, <laughs> uh, it was kind of a pain in the ass having this on the field. You would have to, like, I don't know, target it with your own Book of Moon to get it in the grave to banish it for BLS or um, do something with it. I don't know. But if you had this set and your opponent had Avenging Knight Parshath, and they would just keep uh, piercing and piercing and drawing cards, and it's, it's just not cool. Uh, Tribe Infecting Virus. This card was pretty good back in the day, too. Uh, good monster removal. Um, Sinister Serpent for the Tribe Infecting Virus. Graceful Charity. Uh, uh, a lot of other... Some people ran... I, I forget. Uh, trap cards that made you discard to destroy stuff. Uh, Xeron Universe. The thing was this was... Um, you can make it minus uh, 400 attack points. And it did piercing damage. So once again for the goats. And it also had that 1900 defense for Avenging Knight Parshath. So it couldn't get over... So, uh, Parshath could not get over, um, Xerion Universe, which I'm assuming was also a, uh, Nobleman a Crossout target, um, because if you set a monster, a lot of the time, well, good players will, won't Nobleman of Crossout it if it's, like, they check your graveyard and stuff, I don't know, but like I said, I didn't play back in the day, but I'm just going based off of assumptions, um, and my knowledge, uh, so Xerion Universe was, was just good because I had the 1900 defense, it could pierce, and... Uh, it, it, you didn't have to tribute for it, so it was really good. Uh, it was also a dark for BLS. Um, that's it for the monsters. A very interesting monster lineup. I'm hoping uh, you guys enjoy this deck profile, because I love playing it. Uh, onto the spells. Uh, triple Metamorphosis. So, um, what you would do is you would activate Scapegoat, and then you would um, use the tokens uh, to go into Thousand Eyes Restrict to suck up your opponent's monsters and or you could use Metamorphosis for other things in the extra deck. And by the way, the extra deck was an unlimited number. It wasn't just 15. You could have as many cards in the extra deck as you liked. Um, so yeah, Metamorphosis. Really good. Probably the main point of the deck. Sorry if this is a long video, guys. There's just a lot to explain. Um, three Scapegoat. Uh, the deck is Goat Control. I think you guys all know what Scapegoat does. So no, no need to further explain that. Um... Uh, two Book of Moon. I don't remember if Book of Moon was at two or three in this format. I believe it was at three. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, Book of Moon was really good because it, like I said, it counteracted um, against String of Destruction. Uh, also, it was just a really good card to, to, to you could use it on your own Magician of Faith to um, get your spells back, or you could use it on your opponent's attacking monster to stop them from attacking. But uh, nonetheless, Book of Moon was a really good card back then, and uh, still is now, which is why it's at one. Uh, like I said, you had the main deck, the moment of uh, Crossout, for things like um, sometimes people would set Sinister Serpents so they could just have it in the graveyard. And if you know moment of Crossout a Sinister Serpent, it's banished, which is really good because there's no, there was no way, I, at least I don't think there was no way, to get banished cards back, um, back then. And uh, if you know moment of Crossout something, it was it was gone. So um, mainly people wanted to use this on Magician of Faith, even though it would get rid of their Magician of Faith too, but your opponent didn't have a, mag a Magician of Faith, which was really good. So, two of those, because everybody ran Magician of Faith. Uh, one enemy controller. It was really good back in the day to uh, um, Econ, a Sinister Serpent, uh, take one of your opponent's monsters, and then tribute that monster for something like an Avenging Knight Parshath. Um, it could also have put something in the grave, or I don't know. Uh, like I said, the one MST, and here's where things get awesome. Here's where I really like this... Um, this deck and why I decided to build it is because it took me back to where you could play anything you wanted. Pretty much. It was, there was a ban list. I think it was like Yadagorasu, Chaos Emperor, Dragon, uh, Witch of the Black Forest was banned, I, I believe. But, yeah. Uh, premature Burial. Yes, Premature Burial paid 100 Special Summon a Monster from the Graveyard. Um, when this card is destroyed, the monster is also destroyed, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, and just really good card. Uh, Monster Reborn was banned, which is probably why Premature Burial was banned. Snatch Steel was an amazing card because you could snatch steal your opponent's monsters and then Book of Moon your own monster or flip it with Tsukiyomi. Uh, snatch Steel would fall off and you wouldn't have to give your opponent the 1,000 life points. And I believe that's how the ruling goes. But you could snatch steal things like BLS and then use BLS to banish and then 
Sukiomi, a BLS, make Snatch Seal fall off, flip again, and then banish something else with uh, with BLS. So you could use BLS's banishing effect twice, because um, it was flip face down and then flip back up. So, yeah, Snatch Seal is really good as well, and I, I miss that card so much. Uh, Graceful Charity, a card that will probably never come back ever in the game of ever, as long as uh, Dark Worlds exist. <laughs> because I don't know if they... Actually, I don't know. Do they get their effects? I don't know. But I'm pretty sure they do. But Graceful Charity, um, like I said, with Sinister Serpent, drawing cards was amazing. Uh, heavy Storm, but it's Heavy Storm. <laughs> Still good. Pot of Greed, this will never come back either. It's just a free plus, but it was really good in the deck. If you open Pot of Greed, you netted a lot of advantage. Delinquent Duo was amazing because um, you just delinquent duo, and on, if it was your first turn, you delinquent duoed, and they didn't have the Sinister Serpent discard because you had delinquent duo, they would be forced to start their turn off with only five cards, because you delinquent duo, discard two, and then they draw for their turn. Um, oh, what am I saying? That's four cards. Four cards. <laughs> Sorry, my, my math is bad, apparently. Um, they would start the, their the duel off with four cards because you just delinquent duoed uh, a few things and they'd be forced to like premature burial it or, or something and uh they can do it which is a really solid card back then so that's all the broken spell cards um as you can see that's probably why magician of faith was ran at two because there was a lot of things to get back um for the uh traps there was a, quite a few traps actually there wasn't that many <laughs> dust tornado you really wanted to save your dust tornadoes for things like the uh the uh, the premature burials or the snatch steals um, you never really wanted to blind MST or dust tornado because back then it was really bad uh, you wasted your dust tornado and they could just snatch steal and you wouldn't have the dust tornado and you'd feel kind of stupid because you blind dust tornado <laughs> so yeah dust tornado was really good back then um, well, the good players would would save it for things like snatch steal premature burial Sakuritsu Armor, yes, was once meta. This was a really good card back then. Um, monster removal was amazing, so Sakuritsu Armor was definitely ran. Uh, like I said, Ring of Destruction, this was used to either game your opponent if they summoned a BLS or, or you were just barely any life points away, um, or if you were losing and you you were like only... You had, say, let's say you had 1,000 life points and your opponent had 3,000 life points. They summon a BLS and you flip... Um, Ring of Destruction, it would it would force the game into a tie. Um, I know I don't know what kind of player would want to do that, but it it would that that's how it was used sometimes. It would draw. So yeah, uh, Ring of Destruction. <laughs> uh, one call of the haunted. I, I think it was that one. I'm not sure. Um, getting monsters back from the grave was really huge back then, which is why Monster Reborn was banned because there was no cost for it. You could just activate it and special summon a monster. And yeah, so just. Just the Call of Haunted was amazing. And you also wanted to save Dust Tornadoes for Call of the Haunted as well. And um, a card that you should also consider running this deck is Jinzo. Because you can Call of the Haunted Jinzo. And even if they uh, if they MST it or whatever, um, Jinzo will stay on the board. Because Call of the Haunted is... Jinzo negates the Call of the Haunted. So, yeah. <laughs> one Mirror Force and one Bottomless. I do believe uh, Bottomless was at three. Um, this is kind of, sort of, a deck profile that I got um, offline. Uh, I believe this was Billy Brake's build, except for minus the the enemy controller and something else, maybe? I don't know. Uh, he didn't play enemy controller, but he did play everything else, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, Bottomless Chapel was a really solid card. Banished monsters, once again, it was hard to get them back. And Mirror Force, um, it was an awesome card, too. I think that was that one back in the day. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, the most important part of the deck. Um, let's get into it. Uh, you had 3,000 eyes restrict. This was the card you wanted to go into. This was what you wanted. To, this was the main purpose of the deck, which is why it went three goat control. I mean, <laughs> three scapegoat and three metamorphosis because you wanted to summon this and suck your mo your opponent's monsters up so they couldn't attack, but uh, but you could. Overall, this card was just really awesome. You could you could uh, book of moon it. Um, the the attachment would fall off. You could flip it up and steal a, um, something else uh, when it was flipped up because it's. I don't know, awesome like that. So yeah, Thousand Eyes Restrict. I don't know, if this came back, I don't know how much of a, an impact it would have on today's game because Metamorphosis is banned. So, yeah. <laughs> I Yeah. Um, the rest of the extra deck is kind of irrelevant because you didn't really usually go into anything else. Um, you had your your level 5s, like a Dark Vault to the Terrible for um, your um, Avenging Knight Parshaths. You could use Metamorphosis. Or, 
uh, use a uh, metamorphosis to tribute avenging that parshath to get a dark ball to the terrible out uh, this negated normal spells by paying a thousand life points i believe yeah one thousand life points to negate normal spells so you can negate the pot of greed the graceful charities um and other things like that but you couldn't negate things like a uh, book of moon or or um uh, what is it? Oh, what is it? A snatch steel, premature burial. You can negate uh, nobleman across that, which was pretty good. You can negate metamorphosis, which was also really good. Um, but then again, it was a thousand life points, and a thousand life points was a, a lot back then. Um, the last warrior from another planet. Oh, there's another five. <laughs> well, Reaper on the Nightmare. Um, you could attack directly, discard cards. Yeah, it was good. Uh, good with premature burial and all that stuff, but uh, the last warrior from another planet. I believe this was ran because people cited um, Sacred Phoenix Nephthys, and um, if you cited in your Sacred Phoenix Nephthys, I think you could do that. Um, this card is really solid back in the day. I'm not really sh completely sure, but it was in the deck profile, so I just took it and put it in here. So yeah, really good card. And guys, that was the uh, Goat Control deck profile. Um, I hope you guys will maybe try this deck out on uh, Unrated and DN or or something. And um, it's really, really fun to build. Try to get a, a, your, your friends or your group of friends and uh, build a couple Goat Control deck profiles because it's an awesome deck and um, it's really just fun to play. Um, next, I will be doing a video of my brand new binder. Um, yeah, uh, my binder that I haven't done a binder video in a really long time. I don't know why, but yeah. So don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe for more videos, guys. This has been Lethal Flux, and uh, peace out.